Hello and welcome to the MySQL with MySQL Workbench walkthrough. MySQL is a very popular relational database management system and by itself um, just contains software to manage the database. If you want to interact with the database, you need to use some sort of interface. Um, now, by default, MySQL comes with the MySQL command line utility, um, which is very user unfriendly. Um, so um, most people will use an additional tool, in this case, MySQL Workbench, and which contains graphical a graphical interface to interface with MySQL. So um, this uh, walkthrough assumes that you have installed uh, or had installed MySQL and Workbench together. Um, just to show you what the command line version is like, you can run it using the command line client. Um, when you connect to your local database, it will ask you for the password you use to create it. And this is the command line interface. So um, some of the throwback to the 80s. Um, Okay, very unfriendly as you can see. Uh, databases, databases, it's, it's sort of, you know, tricky. Um, so not what we're going to focus on um, for this tutorial. Um, instead, we're going to load up Workbench. And um, the first screen that Workbench is going to load is the list of connections available to us. So by default, um, you should have your local connection. This is the, the database running on your machine. And um, if you have access to other databases, you can add them with the plus symbol. Um, you just need to know the host name, the IP address or host name. Um, the username and password, as well as default schema. So MySQL refers to databases as schemas. You can have multiple schemas in one sort of um, instance, um, and we'll sort of come on to how you choose which schema to work on in a moment. So let's connect to our local schema. Again, it's going to ask us for the password. And here um, we have the Workbench interface. So Workbench contains many different buttons, tools, menu options that, that we won't need to, to worry about. Um, and so it can be quite overwhelming initially, um, but we're just going to focus on the most useful aspects of it. Um, the first thing on the left-hand side is the schemas list. So this contains all of the databases currently available. And here we have a systems database, which you can expand. And within that, we can look at the tables. There's only one table within that, the columns. Um, and uh, also any indexes or foreign keys. So this is all sort of available um, by clicking through this interface. And um, then we have the query editor in the middle and where we can write our uh, queries. And this contains sort of a, a grammar checker, which will give you sort of helpful tips. Um, but once you've written your queries, you use the lightning bolt to execute your code. Um, on the right hand side, there's additional help. At the bottom will be the output code, um, as well as on the left, having additional information. So quite a lot of real estate on your screen, but you'll primarily be focused um, sort of in the middle and at the bottom here. To be able to demonstrate some of the functionality, we're actually going to import a database. And um, this is the Northwinds database, which is a very um, or Northwind database, common database um, used to teach Microsoft Access. And um, this has been converted on, um, into MySQL by a gentleman uh, shared on GitHub. So um, we're gonna go ahead and download um, all of the information here. And uh, while we're waiting, we can see that it contains the um, structure and the data and some other files. Um, so we're just gonna open up the zip file and we're going to move this folder onto our desktop. So now we have a folder with various files to import. So in Workbench, you can either write out your code in this editor, or you can use this sort of open um, button to select the data that you want to install. In this case, we're going to start with a structure. We don't need to save the old query. And here you'll see the SQL loaded in. So you can sort of see that it's color coded um, the code. Um, it has the little symbols um, which indicate something or other, perhaps um, individual queries. And you can sort of see um, Everything is sort of here. We've got 500 lines of SQL. This is the DDL SQL to define. And so we're just going to go ahead and um, execute. If you select a line, it will execute just that selection. If you deselect, it will execute the whole file. So just be mindful of that. Great. Um, so here you can see the output, um, a couple of warnings, but any errors would have stopped the whole procedure. Now on the left hand side, if we refresh, we now have our North and database. So it's very important that we sort of um, double click on that database and right click to set as default schema. This just means we don't have to type the word Northwind every time we want to access the data. So we've got the structure. Let's go ahead and import the data as well. 
Um, some of these can be quite large, and um, so they might take a bit longer, but we're going to go ahead and, and sort of insert. And this might take a little while. It looks like it's inserting every individual line, um, but it has now finished. So we've now got data in our, in our database. Now that we have um, sort of a real database to work with, um, if we go into tables, you can see there are lots of different tables. So there's a customer's table that contains um, various columns. Um, columns in bold are probably foreign keys, or perhaps they're indexes to speed up searches um, for large data sets. Um, but if we wanted right now to just quickly check how many customers there are, um, we need to open up a new sort of SQL editor window, because this is a, a file that's saved. You can do that on the, the, the left-hand sort of menu bar, create a new SQL tab, and here we can um, start writing our SQL. We don't have to write um, uppercase, but I think for distinguishing SQL versus um, names of tables, I, I find it quite helpful. So here I've written a code, select count from customers, execute that, and now we've got the output here in the results grid. So there are 29 customers. It's not a huge database. Let's see how many employees there are. You'd expect perhaps fewer. Nine employees. Okay, so Northwind, it seems like, is a small business, um, and it has various orders, etc. Now, to truly understand the relational model behind this, um, you could go through each table and look for foreign keys. Um, not getting too much information from here, quite laborious um, and quite sort of slow work. Um, so here we go. The orders table has got relationships to customers, employees, um, order status, order tax status and order shippers. But one of the great features of a MySQL Workbench is its ability to generate an, an entity relationship diagram from a, a running database. So to do that, um, we're going to go up to database, reverse engineer. And this is going to load the model interface to Workbench. Workbench can be used to create a brand new relational model from scratch that you can forward engineer, but you can also reverse engineer existing databases. So here it's going to ask us for the details of our connections. We're going to get to the local instance. It's going to ask us for the same password. And we're going to select the schema to input. It's going to load the schema check which tables we want, we're going to execute that code. And the brilliant part of this is it's going to automatically um, draw the relationships between all of the different um, tables for us. Now, um, top left, you can sort of drag around. Um, if you've got a large database, you might want to zoom out. Um, and we can sort of see there's quite a lot going on here now. So this is a very different view. Um, if we start with the customers, um, and I'll just zoom in to make this a bit more legible. Um, if we start with the customers and we use the um, hand tool to sort of move around. So we start with customers and we can see that there's a relationship just by hovering um, between um, a customer ID in the orders table and customers. So just by hovering over customers, it's highlighting in blue the foreign key between um, um, orders and customers. On the flip side, if we go to orders, it will highlight in green all the other tables it's related to. Um, so you can use this to visually get a, get a quick feel into what's ordered. It's very likely that the auto layout hasn't worked very well, so you may want to sort of move things around. And um, if you're doing a SQL project for your synoptic project, you probably want to spend a good couple of hours just exploring the data, and really understanding what data is available, running some quick queries, um, and sort of getting a sense of it. You can save your ERDs. Um, you can um, export um, as a PNG or a PDF. Um, and if you were to edit, so you can double click and edit this model. Um, you could edit the name of a column, for example. However, you won't edit the live database because it's running on a different tab. When you use reverse engineer, it just creates a model and um, everything you do here is not reflected in the live database. When you're ready to update an existing database, um, you can forward engineer. Um, but um, that's sort of beyond scope for this video. So we've covered using MySQL Workbench to import a new database from a SQL file, to import data into that database from a SQL file, to reverse engineer the database um, to uh, obtain the ERD, um, and then to, to help us better understand what the relationships are. What we're going to do now is look at how to export data from MySQL Workbench, um, should you want to do analysis in either Python, R, or even Excel. So 
going back to the live data here, um, we can actually try and come up with a query. So let's say um, if I look at customers, um, let's say I want to analyze customer job titles, um, and let's say I want to also include um, the uh, city that they're based in. So the customers have a city, but it might not be the same as their shipping city, but let's find out. So first of all, um, we're going to select to start from customers, and it has autocomplete. So here you can sort of click, um, and it will help you finish. Um, so here we've got all of the customers, great, and then we've got some null values as well. So it doesn't look like we've got email addresses here. I'm sure that's for GDPR. Um, but let's say we want to add additional information. Let's say for each customer, um, we want to, um, again, this is where we need to get uh, comfortable with our model. So every customer has only, it's only got one relationship, and that is to orders. Um, so let's look for um, sort of number of orders by customer. So um, what we might want to do is to select, um, just be a bit more specific, select um, the company um, and um, let's select, actually let's just select company from customers. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna um, left join orders on again let's refer back to our diagram so here we're going to say that the orders.customer id is the same as customers.id so orders.customer id equals customers .id. it's always good just to check that your code doesn't throw up any errors um, so now we've got repetition because we've got multiple orders. So what we want to do is to select company and then um, let's select order um, dot. Uh, let's find out what columns there are. So orders, sorry, dot order date. Now we've got a list of order dates by company, but we just want to list the um, count of how many orders there are, um, which is going to uh, return a single value. So here we can see a couple of features. First of all, um, we're actually limiting the output to a thousand rows. So um, sometimes you need to make sure that you're not Doing that, here what we're probably going to have to do is add a group by clause. So um, group by customers dot company. Okay, so and we were missing that group um, by clause um, to successfully calculate the aggregate. Now we have a list of companies and how many orders they've had. Um, you can either sort of manually order this, or again, you can write in your query um, order by counts, orders to order date, or again, we could, we could call this as number of orders, and then sort of work out group by here. And of course, it, it by default is ascending, so we can go to descending. Great, so now we have um, the names of companies ranks by how many orders they have. So once you sort of start working, it's really good practice just to keep working queries, um, save them um, as SQL files, and then use new tabs to create sort of subsequent queries as you build up in complexity. And once you've got data, you probably want to export it. So you can actually go ahead and um, in the results grid, you can see there's an export function, and you can export that to um, companies by order as a CSV or even sort of Excel spreadsheets or other formats. We can save that and then we go ahead and check on our desktop um, that, that has correctly exported companies by order. Um, and then you can sort of import that into either Excel, here we go, um, or another uh, piece of software. 
So that sort of covers the basic functionality of Workbench, connecting to a database, importing data, um, uh, selecting that data, exporting it again, reverse engineering it. And you can also just create a database from scratch using the sort of plus button. Um, you can call it my database. It will show you the SQL DDL for that. It's relatively straightforward. You can apply. And then um, you have my database with no tables. You can create a table by right clicking on tables. And then here you can sort of define all the column names. And you can either do it this way or you could um, create um, a new model. Um, so let's have a quick look. Uh, these are all stored procedures. New model file. And you could um, sort of use this interface to create the model. Um, so right now, it's just got a single um, schema. So what we'd want to do is add in um, a database here. So add a new schema. Here we go, new schema one. And then here you can add a table. And then you've got this interface, which is more similar to the ERD. Um, once you've got your schemas, you can then add a diagram, um, which will then sort of plot out everything that's going on. So that sort of summarizes um, a quick walkthrough of how to use MySQL Workbench. Again, if you have any issues, um, you can contact academy-support at Thanks very much.